you for coming in, everyone. I know we haven't had a lot of rehearsal, but look over your parts, and we'll get started soon. Hey, Jack, 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 uh, how, how you doing? Uh, have you heard anything from Danny? Uh, not for more than a month. You know, the last I heard, he was over fighting in France, but I haven't heard anything since. I tell you, I am worried sick. I'm, I'm sure he's okay.
Christmas. Bah! Humbug! <laughs> and what have you to be so merry about, nephew? You have a miserable job, a poor flat, and a poorer wife that you can hardly afford to support. Ah, uh, it depends on how you look at it, uncle. The way I see it, I have a steady job, a warm place to live, and the most loving, delightful wife a man can wish for. Humbug! <laughs> well, I come to invite you and your humbug to Christmas dinner tomorrow, Uncle. Polly would love to have you, and we'll have such a jolly time. Please, Uncle, please come. Christmas is for family, for sharing. Family. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the humbug, and humbug again. You married without my permission, friend, and without my blessing. I told you it was a mistake to marry a poor woman, and I will not condone it by stepping one foot into your miserable little flat. <clears throat> I'm truly sorry, Uncle. I hope you'd see how happy I was. Well, should you change your mind, the offer still stands. What's this world coming to? No one wants to work. They just want to have fun and marry for love. <laughs> Christmas dinner. Bah! Humbug! As Scrooge is grumbling, two women enter the office. Excuse me, sir. Uh, this is the office of Scrooge and Marley, is it not? It is indeed, ma'am. And might you be Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley, sir? Uh, as Mr. Marley has been dead these five years, I must be Mr. Scrooge. Ah, <laughs> oh, I see. I was confused by the sign that says... Scrooge and Marley. It's a perfectly good sign, and I saw no reason to go to the expense of another, just because my partner had the bad sense to die. Well, sir, allow us to get right to business, then. Ah, <laughs> business, is it? Yes, indeed, sir. I am Miss Annabel Smythe, and this is Miss Margaret Jones, and we come to you on behalf of the Sisters of Sincerity Charity. Yes, sir. We are soliciting funds to help the poor. No, oh, you are, are you? Well, I must say, you two certainly make my day complete. Why, thank you, sir. Not only am I losing a day of work from my clerk, not only is my nephew acting like a fool, but I'm standing here talking to two people for whom I have absolutely no use. Uh, well, sir, we were hoping that yeah, you... you were hoping I would dance with joy at being able to give my hard-earned money to people who are too lazy to work themselves and thus expect other fools to support them. Well, it is Christmas, you know, sir. Surely you have room in your heart. For what? For those too lazy to work? There are many people who cannot get work, even though they want it. And there are many children who are starving. And what is that to me? Are there no orphanages, no prisons, no workhouses? Well then, let them handle those who will not take care of themselves. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, surely you don't mean it. Oh, I do indeed, madam. You will get nothing from me, and I suggest you consider for yourselves the effect of what you do. You have been fooled into thinking that because it's Christmas, we should be more charitable than the rest of the year. You have been humbugged, madam, like the rest of the world. <laughs> Christmas is a humbug, humbug, humbug. Everyone demanding everything from you. People keep on asking, whining. Begging, and because it's Christmas, they expect that you'll come through. Clerks are stop early, relatives want your time. Do gooders demand that I give them what is mine? This day is foolish, your charities I spurn. I ask for nothing and give nothing in return. If I had my way, ma'am, some way, ma'am, this day, ma'am, would be just another dreary day. I despise this madness, this chaos, this nonsense, and I despise you also, and so just go out way. Goodbye. <laughs> Annabelle and Margaret step out into the night, saddened by Scrooge's miserliness. Oh, strange his feelings, what a lonely man. Such a sad existence is hard to understand. Something has happened to turn his heart to stone. Why does he punish himself keeping so alone? Never have I heard of such words of such anger. I cannot believe he plays that part. It is Christmas with the empty and lonely and hollow. And every bit as bitter. 
home to a snowy night filled with happy voices calling holiday wishes to all. He grumbles as he walks to his front door, where he fumbles with his key. Ah, home at last. Christmas. Charity. Ah, maybe here I can escape the fools of this world and find a little peace. But as he puts his keys in the door, he hears a moan. The wind must be picking up. Strange I don't feel it. No wind, but there's a definite chill in the air. Scrooge goes into the house and changes into his nightshirt and robe. Then he hears it again. The old house has many noises tonight. He goes to his meager kitchen and prepares a bowl of porridge. What? Oh. Hmm. So, sounds almost like ghosts. <laughs> They're all stuff and nonsense. Settling into his worn old armchair, he begins to eat. Fredens, fancy dinner. Nothing wrong with gruel. It's filling and cheese. Oh. <laughs> Christmas. A bun. Exhausted from a full day of grumbery, Scrooge sits back in his chair and falls asleep. The sound of church bells tolling the midnight hour. A clanking sound is heard. Scrooge mumbles in his sleep, then suddenly sits up awake. But he hears nothing. Oh, humbug. The sound of clanking grows louder. As Scrooge looks around, Marley's ghost appears. He is wrapped in chains and money boxes, and looks as though he has been dead for quite a while, as indeed he has. Oh, but he's a Scrooge. What's that? Who's there? <coughs> in life, I was known as Jacob Marley. Don't you recognize your old partner? Marley? No, it can't be. You've been dead these five years. Five years to you, an eternity of misery to me. Well, what's the matter, Jacob? Is there no peace? Uh, no, no peace, e even where you are? What peace I might have had was shattered by my earthly ways. Oh, what nonsense. You were a fine businessman. The human race should have been my business. And now I am forced to wear the chains of greed. I come to warn you, Ebenezer, to keep you from making the mistakes I made. Tonight, you will be visited by three spirits. Well, thank you, Jacob, but uh, I'd rather not. Ah! <coughs> you will be visited by three spirits. Mark what they say, Ebenezer. They will come to help guide you. It's too late for me, but you may still change your life. Change my life? What rot? Oh! Jacob? Jacob? Where did you go? Where are you? Bah, it was just a dream. A bit of undigested dinner. <laughs> but yet, how strange to see Jacob again after all these years. Lulled by self-assurance that all is as it should be, Scrooge falls back to sleep. But before long, he is once more awakened by an unearthly sound. <laughs> Hello? Who's there? He awakens to the vision of a young girl dressed in soft, flowing robes. Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, that, that, that's I. Uh, who might you be? I am the spirit of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Come, take my hand, and we shall begin our journey. Uh, well, if it's all the same to you, I'd as soon not go anywhere tonight. You, you must. See. You've forgotten your past, Ebenezer, and you must find it again. If you have any hope for the future. The past is gone. 
It doesn't matter. Oh, but it does. The past tells you how you came to be what you are today. Only by knowing and understanding that can you change. Who says I want to change? You sadden me, Ebenezer. Are you truly happy with who you have become? A supper of cold gruel in an even colder house? A life of anger that eats away inside of you, spewing out hatred for everyone you see? Are you happy with being alone, cold and empty, both outside and in? It's who I am. You can change who you are. You can be happy. Do you remember happiness? Happiness? It was, it was so long ago. Then let's find it. Take my hand. He hesitates, then touches her hand and finds himself <coughs> floating away, away, away. And as they float, the spirit sings. you were. Take the time to look behind today. Let me lead the way to a sweeter day. See where you begin, where your rivers had their start. How they somehow came together to make you the man Feeling 
lonely, I really don't know why. Nothing's better than to be in school. Who needs Christmas? I'd rather be alone. The holidays were made for fools. Sentiments for weaklings. Better you get strong. Learn to hide emotions every day. Who needs family? They'll only hold you back. So toughen up your feelings all the way. The world is not a happy place. Watch your back and hide your face. Better no one knows what's in your heart. People want to crush you, to steal what you may have. It's better just to keep yourself apart. I was once a dreamer. My heart was full of hope. I learned soon enough that love's a lie. <laughs> Who needs Christmas? It only lets you down. Who needs it? Who wants it? Not I. truly wants. The rest is just sentimental hogwash. Convinced she had taught a powerful lesson, Miss Grudgman leaves the boy alone. <laughs> Do I feel neglected? Why should I feel that way? Just because my family left me here. Who needs Christmas? I'd rather be alone, as lonely as I am all through the year. Why am I downhearted? It's not as if I care. You can't miss the love you never knew. Who needs Christmas? A haze upon your eyes. The promise of a love that won't come true. Some children might need all that noise, all the love and all those toys. I don't have the thought annoys me too. Who needs lights and tasties, the warmth of family near? I'd rather learn to build my revenues. No one really loves you or cares if you are sad. All they want is everything from you. Who needs family? The smiles and their hugs, the warmth of the things, their wishes all come true. So who needs Christmas? It's laughter and it's love. Who needs it? Who wants it? I do. <clears throat> My sister, Fan. Oh, my lord, look at her. I'd forgotten how young and beautiful she was. Fan. Oh, Fan, are you really here? Oh, I've missed you and Mother so much. Well, you needn't miss us anymore. Ebenezer, Father has sent me to fetch you. For Christmas? For good. Oh, Ebenezer, he's changed. He's missed you so much, and I think he realizes how much he loves you. He's much kinder now, and it's so much more jolly at home. Oh, come back with me, and we'll be a family again. She seems fond of the boys. Oh, she was wonderful. <laughs> Sweet, loving, kind. Foolish traits, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but don't go, Fan. Stay, please. Married beneath her, I hear. Yes, she married a pauper. Against my advice. For love, wasn't it? Foolish girl. You never spoke to her again, did you? Uh, she, she died very young, didn't she? Too young. Too young. In, in childbirth, there was a child. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, a, a boy. Your, your nephew, Fred. He's very like her, isn't he? I loved her so, Fan. 
Oh, Fan, I'm so sorry. All the things I never said. I never thought I'd lose him and her. We never do. Come, we must move on. With the whirl of light, Scrooge finds himself looking in an office that is being prepared for a party. Do you recognize <laughs> this? Well, yes, it's old Fezziwig's son. I apprenticed here. And there's old Fezziwig himself, as merry and hearty as when he was alive. And Mrs. Fezziwig, God oh, rest her soul. And what a jolly soul it was. And who are these two coming in? Oh, well, that's me and my old friend Frank. Uh, we worked for Fezziwig when we were just starting out. Come, Ebenezer, Frank. No more work tonight. It's Christmas Eve. Come, boys. Help us set up the shop for a celebration. I've been cooking and baking all day. And the fiddlers will be here soon. And so are the ladies ready to dance the night away. Oh, oh here comes everyone now. Oh, such lovely young girls. Mr. Fezziwig. I just seen for the boys here, Fan. <laughs> we only dance with you. <laughs> if you only work from sun to sun and never get any living done, you'll find your life devoid of fun. So join the party, everyone. Join the party, everyone. You can trudge along from day to day, fixating on your daily pay, and miss your life as it slips away. So join the party, come and play. Join the party, come and play. Keep some balance in your life and leave some time to dance. The time will come when it's too late and you'll have missed your chance. There's a time for grind and a time for mirth. There's room for both on this old earth. The blend is what will make your work. So join the party, sing a verse. So join, join the party, party sing a verse. When you take the time to laugh, it lightens up your heart. Then when you must get to work, it's easier to start. Let, Let the, the laughter ring, let the voices soar, and lose your cares on the old dance floor. The song repeats forevermore. Come on and take our hands. Let your heart be light, let your soul shine bright, let your joy into your plan. And joy the party, joy the party, joy the party, party while you can. Not very good business, closing up early. Oh, but that was old Fezziwig. <laughs> Always ready for a dance and a fight. He never became wealthy. And children, and he was always happy. A fool. No, I. Uh, children. Oh. Suddenly, a beautiful young woman enters the room. Young Ebenezer is thunderstruck. Why did you stop dancing there? Well. She's very lovely. She's magnificent. Oh, look, she went right for me. Oh, look at them dance. She obviously loved you very much. Oh, and I loved her. <laughs> she was my life. We were to marry. What happened? I don't really see. The party fades away, and Scrooge and the spirit find themselves in a park, where young Ebenezer and Val sit alone on a bench. Well, be reasonable. We can still be married. No, Ebenezer. I don't think I fit in your plans anymore. My father has lost his fortune, and you don't want to marry a poor girl. But I love you. But there is something you love more. I've been replaced in your heart by the love of gold. <laughs> no. I've watched you these past months, and I've seen your wealth become more and more important, filling your heart and crowding me out. I'm sorry, Ebenezer. I love you. But I don't love what you are becoming. A cold, hard, calculating businessman. Oh, Belle, it's not that way. I'm the same as I ever was. Are you? Tell me now, Ebenezer. Tell me you wouldn't rather marry a rich girl who could bring to you more of what you really want. Tell me I'm wrong, and I will stay and marry you. You 
Speak, you fool. Tell her she's wrong. But is she? You cannot say it, can you? So I thought. I loved a lad who was bright and bold, and together we dreamed great dreams. So he worked very hard to amass great wealth, but the ends then became the means. I am a lass, a penniless girl, who can offer him nothing but me. But it isn't enough when he wants all the world, and to him love was not when free. Losing Bell. Stay tuned. There's plenty more to come in this production of Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. But first, here's a word about Pepsi. And we're out. Ken, are you okay? I'm, I'm so sorry. Emily, Ken, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I promise. I will pull it together. I promise you. Please. I need this. I need this. If you're sure. We're all here for you, Jack. Yeah, I, I know. I'll, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. And we're back in three, two. Welcome back to Act Two of Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, brought to you by White Smile of Pepsodent. When we last saw Scrooge, he was back in his house, in his chair, alone, howling off for his past love. Bell! Bell! At the sound of the clock's chimes, Scrooge wakes up to see a jolly giant spirit in a bright fur robe, wearing a coronet of flowers, and carrying a goblet. Ho, oh, Ebenezer Scrooge! How can you sleep when it's Christmas? Wake up, man! Life is happening all around you! I, I take it you are the second of the spirits I was told about? I am the spirit of Christmas present. But touch my robe and fly with me to see all the joy that is happening this Christmas day. Uh, well, all right, but, but don't go too fast. If you could pick one moment, dear, what would you set upon? Whatever you might pick today, tomorrow will be gone. I only know the days go by more quickly.
than a blinking eye. So treasure uh, them as on they fly, so swiftly, one by one. The present is the greatest gift, the only thing we own. Though we go searching through the years and seeking the unknown, today is ours to cherish, for tomorrow we may perish. The present is the greatest gift this world has ever known. <laughs> of all that you, th you think you possess, what do you really own? A pile of things that's here today and all too soon is gone. An hour is here, and then it flies. Hellos are partnered with goodbyes, so cherish all that life implies before our time has flown. Today is all we really have, a moment that's on loan. We plan and scheme our lives away, but time is an unknown. You may be wanting large amounts, but memories are all that counts. The present is the greatest gift this world has ever known! <laughs> the song has brought the unseen spirit and Scrooge into the home of Fred and his wife, Polly, where they are entertaining another young couple, James and Henny. Do you know these young people? Uh, my nephew, Fred, and I suppose that is his wife, uh, Polly, and some of their friends. His wife is quite lovely, and they look very happy. You disapproved of his marriage. Why? Well, he could have made a much better, richer match. And still, she is a pretty little thing. <laughs> oh, very lively, too. Come all, let's have a little toast before we sit down to dinner. Polly's a wonder with a cut of meat, so I know dinner will be a feast to remember. Yes, I know all the tricks to making a simple roast taste like a king's banquet. I just wish Uncle Ebenezer would have joined us. Ebenezer Scrooge? Why in the world would you want that old miser to put a damper on the festivities? James, please. He is my uncle, and beneath that crusty exterior... Lies a crusty interior. My aunt had the misfortune of asking him to help support her charities, and he turned her down flat. Well, I will admit, he is tight with eyes. I heard that he squeezes a farthing so hard, it screams. Please, <laughs> let's stop saying mean things about Uncle Ebenezer. He is family, and even though he warned Fred not to marry me, or cut him off without a farthing, were he to walk in here this minute, I would take his hat, curtsy, and bid him welcome. And we will not dampen our lovely Christmas dinner by talking further about it. She is a spirited one, and kind, too. Uh, too bad you turned down Fred for dinner. That's a lovely fire he has going. And even from here, that simple roast smells delicious. <laughs> welcome. It's time to go. Oh, can't, can't we stay just a minute longer? That roast does smell good. And it's so warm and cheery here. There are other dinners for us to drop in on. And just like that, they are standing inside a different house. This one is bored and cramped. Yet, there is the same joy emanating throughout, with a woman and her children preparing for dinner. Ah, here's a promising place. Where are we now, Spirit? I, I don't know this house. Ah, and therein lies the pity of it, sir. It is the home of Bob Cratchit, your faithful clerk for many years. And yet, you've never met his family or set foot in his home. They are very merry, aren't they? Is that his wife? What is she cooking? It smells wonderful. Uh, better than cold gruel you had for dinner, eh? Children, behave. Your father and Tim will be home from church soon, and we can eat. Oh, Mother, what a feast you have made! Please, let us look once more at the bird. Oh, yes, Mother! Please! <laughs> Very well. Here, take a look. Ooh! Ah! Why, it's hardly big enough to feed them all. Why did they get a big 
your luck. On what you pay, Mr. Cratchit, they are lucky they were able to afford any bird at all. Oh, why, it's Bob Cratchit, and the child on his back. It must be one of his children. Lord, he has many children, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, what's that the child's holding? A crutch? Spirit. We're home at last. Hungry as thieves, Mrs. Cratchit. You should have seen Tim at church. He sang so beautifully and smiled at all the people. He, he said, he said he hopes everybody sees him and his crutch and remembers the one who made lame beggars walk. Father, <laughs> Father, don't be sad. It's Christmas. Oh, Tim, you always bring me such joy. God bless you. God bless us all. As we travel that road to board forever, we can lend a helping hand before we're done. If we can make somebody's life a little brighter, then God bless us every enough to keep food in their mouths, let alone pay for doctors and medicines. But this is none of your concern, is it? Suddenly, two ragged children appear and stand staring at Scrooge. Smitty, those children, where did they come from? Whose children are they? They are mankind's children. They belong to us all. The boy's name is Ignorance, and the girl's name is Want. They're so ragged. Their eyes are so sad, they burn into me. Who will help them? Are there no prisons, no poorhouses, no orphanages? But those are your words. <laughs> the spirit lets out a roaring laugh as he backs away and disappears. Spirit, where are you? Don't leave me alone. The children, the children, Danny. <laughs> when Scrooge awoke, he was ready for the third spirit, or so he thought. He looked around, expecting the same light and music he'd heard before. This time, however, he was in for a shock. This spirit was all in black, with a ghostly chill about him. Frightened, Scrooge forced himself to speak. What? Are you the third spirit of whom I was told? I am. I take it you are the spirit of... Christmas yet to be. I am. Spirit, I fear you most of all. 
Are you here to show me my future? I am. Well then, let us be off and be done with it. Once again, Scrooge found himself at the Crash House. This time, however, there was no jollity. The family was silent, each going about his or her chores with no laughter, no singing, no joy when Bob returned home. You were very late this evening, Mr. Cratchit. Did you stop by to visit him again? Yes, my dear. It's a lovely, peaceful place. It's getting so green and flowers are beginning to come up. I find peace thinking that he is among all the grass and the tree. Spirit, of whom does he speak? Has the child died? Could nothing be done? Tell me, Spirit! Oh. The Spirit waves his hand and they are suddenly in a low tavern, where Harry is counting and selling goods. Olive, a dirty, raggedly dressed scrounger, enters with some things to sell. Oi, Olive, what did you manage to get from the old top? I got some candlesticks, I pilfered, and some silverware. That's all? The man was rich as creases. Oi, there wasn't much to take. The old coot was a skin flint and never bought nice things. Well, I guess none of that matters now anyway. The dead don't call his silver, I mm. always says. <laughs> <laughs> Scrooge, realizing he is in a den of thieves, is appalled. Spirit, these people have robbed the dead. How horrible. Tell me, who is the poor soul who is so alone that there's no one to guard his wretched corpse? Come oh, and you'll see. With a sweep of his hand, the spirit transports them to a gloomy graveyard, where he indicates a lone stone that has fallen over. Here lies a poor soul who died friendless, leaving all his worldly goods to be stolen and viewed so much in dust. Spirit. Before I look at that stone, I must know, are these things that we've seen tonight visions of a future that will be or that might be? Might I be able to change the future by changing my ways? Spirit, answer me, please. Turn the stone over. Scrooge, terrified by what he fears is there, creeps to the headstone and pulls it up. There he reads his own name, Ebenezer Scrooge. No! Spirit, tell me this is not my true end. Suddenly they are joined by other spirits who dance around the terrified Ebenezer. Look at your past, Ebenezer, and the light that has brought you this far. Did you ever know your joy as a child, as a boy? Today, Ebenezer, that the life you are living right now, do you like what you see? Sorrow and joy in Ebenezer, waiting for you to grasp them. Once there was happiness now buried in your heart, once you knew kindness and love. How did you find so and let the joy depart? How could you dismiss it? How could you not miss it? What? Lies ahead, Ebenezer. Will you please? You're all now in the dark. Is your life all it is? Can you change how you live? Can you reach your blink as you pass? Ebenezer, Ebenezer, can you change your ways and live at last? <laughs> Disappear. With a shriek, Scrooge falls back into his own chair and falls asleep, the words of the spirit still ringing in his ear. Forty <laughs> 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 commercial. We'll be right back with the rest of the story after this word from Pepsi. Don't go without your Pepsi and smile. And we're up. Jack. Dad. Are you all right? Uh, Dad! What? What? Oh, 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 hey, oh, hey, my, oh, oh my God, you're here! Oh, 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 but, but the, the telegram! I know. Said, we were shelled in. I lost all my dog tags. And I was unconscious for a long time. And I didn't know who I was. And then I came to. And he told me that they'd send you the telegram. And I hope I beat it here. But... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry! Oh, God, son! You're a home! Jack, I hate to ask, 
but can you finish the show? <laughs> you bet I can. Let's go. Right. And we're on. In three, two. And Scrooge woke from his deep troubled sleep to find. <laughs> I'm alive! I'm alive! <laughs>
But since you seem to take so much stock in the day, I guess I have no other choice but to... Please, please, sir, please, sir. Raise your salary. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, I... What? What? <laughs> Why, you can't raise a family on what I was paying you. Ah, oh, here's the butcher. Uh, please, put the turkey over there. Uh, my dear, you'd best get started if you want this bird to be ready for Christmas dinner. Mr. Scrooge, what are you doing? What I should have done from the start, Bob. But when you come back to work after Christmas, things will be different. There will be a scuttle full of coal and bright lights and a much more pleasant employer. I don't know what to say. Don't say nothing. I've been a fool. But if you let me, I will try to make it up to you. And you won't have to worry anymore about how to take care for this fine family of yours. God bless you, Mr. Scrooge. Ah, Tim, isn't it? A fine boy. I will care for your family, Bob. And we will get the finest doctors for Tim to make sure he lives a long, happy life. I only hope you can find it in your heart to forgive a selfish old man for all I've done to you. Of course, sir. A Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Scrooge. A Merry Christmas to you, Bob. A merrier one than I've given you in many a year. Please, sir, won't you stay for dinner? You have brought the turkey. You can at least enjoy it with us. Ah, uh, thank you, kind madam. I hope there will be many days of my rejoicing along with your fine family. Uh, but right now, I have one more heart to ask for forgiveness. Life is more than a time to make money, full of things that are worth more than gold. There are families uh, and friends that I must uh, not your bed, but I'm happy that's with them before I am too old. Uh, here's your chance. Don't be afraid, just let your life unfold. Ah, here we are. Uncle Ebenezer, what a surprise. Fred, my boy, forgive an old fool. I was wondering if your kind invitation to dinner still stood. Well, I... Well, Ollie? Of course it does. Fred, where are your manners? A glass of wine for Uncle Ebenezer. We are delighted you decided to join us. I am Fred's wife, Polly. Polly, how kind of you to let me in after I've been so terrible to you. Of course we welcome you. Your family. Come, meet our friends, Hetty and Jane. This is our dear Uncle Ebenezer. Mr. Scrooge. Well, we're all surprised to meet you, sir. Yes, we've heard so much about you. <laughs> yes, I'm quite sure you have. But rest assured, you'll be hearing of a different Scrooge from now on. Fred, I am quite anxious to spend time with you and Polly. I want to tell you stories about your mother, and I want to get to know her boy. I would like that, too. Scrooge. Well, if I might offer a toast to Christmas, to life, and to us, God bless us, everyone. God, God bless us, everyone. If as we travel we forget our separate sorrow, we always have to borrow.